Hi there! Welcome to Sally Tomato. I'm Kate and today we are going to sew the Miranda tote. This bag was designed by Renee, Jessica's mom, and she was inspired by the movie The Devil Wears Prada. She imagined Miranda Priestly would look very fashionable using this tote, and you will too. A delightfully easy bag to sew, our Miranda features large, deep exterior and interior pockets and a top recessed zipper opening so it's extra secure. The straps are reinforced with easy to install rivets, giving a sleek professional look. All right, enough talk. Let's get started. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. Then gather your fabrics. You'll need a main fabric, an accent fabric, a lining fabric, a fusible woven interfacing, and sew-in foam. If your accent fabric is a woven fabric, such as a quilting cotton or linen, you may want to interface those fabrics to give them some additional body and structure. You'll also need a 16-inch single slide zipper and hardware. I'm using small 6mm rivets, a zipper cord end, one donut or circle zipper pull, which I've already placed on the zipper, four purse feet, and a metal handmade label. All the metal hardware coordinates with the faux metal zipper coils, available in nickel, gold, antique, gunmetal, and rose gold for perfect coordination. Then gather a few helpful notions, such as sulky 40 weight polydeco thread, clover wonder clips, basting tape or glue, paper tape, pins, chalk or removable pen, stiletto, seam roller, and a seam ripper might come in handy, a teflon foot and a zipper or narrow foot, rotary punch, rivet setting tools, and a very small Phillips head screwdriver. Then follow the cutting instructions in your pattern to cut all the pieces that you'll need. You may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. Now the first step is to center and fuse the interfacing pieces to the wrong side of the coordinating lining zipper bands. Next, we're going to place two straps, wrong sides together, adhering the layers with basting tape, glue, or sewing clips, or a combination to hold the straps together securely. Insert a new quality top stitching needle and set the stitch length to 3.5 millimeters, then top stitch along both long edges of the strap with an eighth inch allowance. You'll repeat the steps for the second strap before setting the pair of straps aside. Place the exterior front pocket to the lining piece of the front pocket, wrong sides together, aligning all the edges. Hold those layers together with pins or sewing clips. Now baste along all the edges with an eighth inch allowance. For basting, you can keep a longer stitch length because you only need the layers held together. Next, mark a line down from the right side top edge of the front pocket using removable chalk or pen. Then place basting tape just above the marked line. Position the pocket trim over the tape aligning the bottom long edge of the trim on the marked line. Press the trim in place with your fingers. Now fold the trim piece over the top edge of the front pocket to the lining side. Hold the trim edge in place with some more basting tape or sewing clips. Position the front pocket right side up and top stitch an eighth inch from the raw edge of the trim, catching the back of the trim in the stitching. Let's move on and start the second part of the tote front. Place the front top and lining piece for the front bottom right sides together, aligning one long edge. Hold the edges together with sewing clips. Now adjust the stitch length to about a 2.5 or 3.0 millimeter length for construction and sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. With your fingers, press the bottom piece away from the seam and the top. A seam roller also works really well and is easier on your fingers. 
Then top stitch an eighth inch from the seam through all the layers of the seam allowance. Now position the front pocket over the tote front right sides up, aligning the sides and the bottom raw edges. Use pins and sewing clips to hold them all together. Baste the pocket sides and bottom with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next we need to add foam. Center one foam piece over the wrong side of the tote front, aligning side and bottom raw edges. The foam is shorter than the tote front to allow for easier sewing when the tote is assembled in a later step. Use sewing clips to hold the foam in place. Now baste the layers together with an eighth inch allowance. You're going to stitch along just the sides and the bottom edges of these layers. Mark a vertical center line on the tote front using a removable chalk or pen. If you prefer, mark the vertical line on the wrong side of the tote front unit. You'll know then that no trace of markings will show on the right side of your project. Top stitch from the bottom edge to the top edge an eighth inch from each side of the marked line through all the layers. By starting at the bottom edge, the front pocket will stay nice and straight. If you marked the wrong or foam side, then top stitch with the wrong side facing up. Now we're going to add foam to the wrong side of the tote exterior back, aligning the side and bottom edges. Again, the foam is shorter than the exterior back to allow for the easier sewing when we assemble the tote later. Use sewing clips to hold those edges together. Baste the layers together with an eighth inch seam allowance. Let's add the straps. Measure and mark the strap placements on both the exterior back and front, referring to the pattern instructions. Add a short piece of basting tape to the bottom of each strap end. Then position the strap ends at the markings on the exterior pieces. Check that there's no twist in the straps when you place them on the toe pieces. Top stitch a long rectangle at each strap end, stitching an eighth inch from the raw edges. Use a bit of paper tape to mark the topmost stitching line. That way, if you stitch through it, it's really easy to remove. Now add a small rivet centered at each strap end for reinforcement. If needed, add a scrap of foam to the wrong side of the strap top stitching area. It will help aid in properly setting the rivet. If you like the look of rivets, don't stop at just one. Add a second or even a third to each strap, simply adjusting the spacing when adding the extra rivets. Then install a metal handmade label centered and place just below the top edge of the tote front. Be sure to visit the Sally Tomato YouTube channel for Jess's detailed video tutorials on installing both of these hardware pieces. Now we can begin assembling the Miranda exterior. Place the foam base piece on the wrong side of the main base piece, aligning all the edges and holding those layers together with sewing clips. And now we can top stitch 3 8 inch from all four raw edges. Trim away the excess foam, cutting close to but not through the stitching. Next, mark placements for the purse feet. Again, referring to your pattern for the exact measurement and install the purse feet at the markings. For a detailed video tutorial on installing the feet, be sure to visit the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Center one long side of the base piece along the bottom edge of the tote front, right sides together, and aligning the raw edges. Sew a quarter inch seam, beginning and ending a quarter inch in from the base ends. Remember to back stitch at the beginning and end of the stitching to reinforce the seam. Make a small nip into the tote seam allowance at the ends of the seams, being careful not to cut into the stitches. Press the base over the seam allowance, away from the tote front, with your fingers or a seam roller. Now we're back at the machine and you're going to top stitch, following the previous line of top stitching on the base. It's about an eighth inch from the seam. Repeat the same steps for attaching the opposite long side of the base to the exterior tote back. Next we're going to match the tote front and tote back right sides together, aligning the raw edges. Hold the layers together with sewing clips. Sew the sides with a quarter inch seam allowance and then press the seam open with your fingers. Okay, our tote exterior is almost complete. Bring the side seam 
to meet the center of the short end of the base, right sides together, and align the raw edges. Use a few sewing clips to hold the layers together. Now sew a quarter inch seam allowance to form a box corner. Backstitch at the beginning and end of the seam and do the same steps to complete the box corner for the opposite side. Turn the tote exterior right side out and take a minute to admire your work. We're ready to move on to the interior pockets. Fold the double pocket lining piece in half, wrong sides together, meeting the short edges and pressing the top fold edge. Then top stitch along the fold with an eighth inch allowance. Mark the vertical center of the pocket, dividing it into two sections. You can use removable pen or chalk, but I pressed a center line so there's no visible marking later. Align the bottom edge and sides of the pocket with the long bottom edge of one lining piece. Pin the pocket in place. Stitch an eighth inch from each side of the marked vertical line to create a divided pocket. I'm following my pressed fold line. Base the outer edges of the pocket to the lining. I'm going to be stitching along the outer side edge, then stitch across the bottom just past the center, then pivot stitching up the top of the pocket pivot take two stitches across that marked line or pressed line then pivot and stitch down to the bottom pivot again and stitch across the rest of the bottom edge toward the corner and then up the side okay set that pocket unit aside and we're on to the next pocket fold the single pocket piece in half this time right sides together meeting the short ends then pin or clip, and we're going to sew both side edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Angle trim the top corners of the seam allowance without cutting into the seam stitches to reduce the bulk. Now we're going to turn the pocket to its right side and press the fold and seam edges. Top stitch along the top fold edge with an eighth inch allowance. Now position the pocket centered over the right side of the remaining lining piece, aligning the bottom cut edges Pin the pocket in place, and then we're going to top stitch both pocket sides with an eighth inch allowance. Baste the bottom raw edges again with an eighth inch allowance. Let's make the recessed zipper. Press each short edge of the four recessed zipper bands a half inch to the wrong side, and then set those aside for just a moment while we prepare the zipper. With wrong sides together, Fold each top opening end of the zipper at a 90 degree angle and pin or clip to hold that angle. You may find it easier to keep the zipper closed to see that the zipper ends remain even. Now stitch along the outer edge of the zipper tape, holding the tape ends in place. I find that a zipper foot or narrow foot is really helpful for this step. All right, let's attach the recessed bands. With right sides together, position the zipper on top of one band piece. Align the top long raw edges and the fold top end of the zipper with the folded edge of the band. Pin in place and with the right side down, layer a second band on top of the zipper. Align the long raw edges and the folded edges, holding the layers together with pins or sewing clips. Sew the bands and zipper together along the long edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold both band pieces away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together and give the seam a press and then top stitch an eighth inch from the seam and side edges. I'm starting at one short end, pivoting at the corner and continuing the stitching to the opposite short end. Move the zipper pull out of the way if needed. Repeat the same process to attach the remaining two band pieces to the opposite side of the zipper and we're ready to add the finishing touch to the zipper end. You can choose between hardware or fabric. The metal zipper cord ends are really easy to attach and look super sleek and professional, but check out Jess's video tutorials on our YouTube channel for both options to help you decide. Time to add the zipper to the lining. With right sides up, center one long edge of the recessed zipper down from the top edge of one lining piece and pin the layers in place. 
top stitch the raw edge to the lining with an eighth inch seam allowance. While I'm at the machine, I'm just going to fold the recessed zipper up and press the seam with my fingers. You could use a seam roller along that seam as well. And then top stitch a quarter inch from the seam to enclose the raw edge. Repeat the steps to attach the opposite long edge of the recessed zipper to the remaining lining piece. Add the lining base piece to the bottom of the front and back lining panels following the same steps used for the exterior tote and this time using half inch seam allowances and omitting the top stitching along the base. Remember to leave a 5 to 6 inch opening along one base seam for turning the bag as well as taking that little clip into the lining panel at the back stitching of the seam. Match the lining front and back side edges, right sides together, aligning raw edges. Hold the layers together with sewing clips. Begin sewing at the top edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, then gradually increase your allowance to a half inch. Using a wider seam allowance will create a slightly smaller lining, which will fit neatly inside the tote. Trim the lining seam allowance to quarter inch widths. Press the seams open where possible. Then bring the side seam to meet with the center of the lining base short end, right sides together, and then align the raw edges. Secure the layers on both ends with sewing clips. Now sew a half inch seam allowance to form a box corner. Backstitch at the beginning and end of the seam and repeat to complete the box corner for the opposite side. Okay, open the zipper completely, then insert the exterior tote into the lining. Right sides together and match up the side seams and align the raw top edges securing with sewing clips. Continue aligning the top edges, holding the layers together with clips and making certain that the straps and the zipper are down inside the tote. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance along the top edge, taking care to not stitch over the straps. Turn the tote through the opening in the lining. Then smooth the exterior and shape the corners before closing the turning opening. I did a quick top stitch along the folded edges of that opening before I pushed the lining down into the tote. Roll the lining along the top edge to the inside pressing with your fingers. Hold those edges in place with clips and then top stitch the edge with an eighth inch allowance. Be sure not to catch the straps in the top stitching. Our last addition, insert the main fabric zipper pull into the opening in the donut zipper pull by folding the zipper pull in half, bringing the fold through the zipper tab, then pulling the ends through the loop that's formed and tightening the loop. You're finished! You should be so proud of your beautiful Miranda tote. This is such a great pattern for showcasing interesting fabrics, and I'd like to thank Renee for her wonderful design. We all hope that you'll share photos of the Miranda totes you create using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Miranda Tote Pattern. Give us a thumbs up if you like this tutorial and found it helpful, and remember to subscribe so you won't miss the next one. And as always, thank you for watching and happy sewing.